and welcome, welcome, welcome again. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another Collie's class. Today is a fantastic topic. I'm very excited to tell you all about it. It is, so you want to be a fossil. I know, cool, right? Well, I was hanging out in my classroom, as I do most of my days, and my buddy here, the squid, asked me how he could become very much like his buddy the cephalopod fossil and i was like oh squid buddy i can help you out with this i even wrote a song about it ready here we go so you want to be a fossil that sounds like fun to me the steps that must be carried out must be followed oh so very carefully. And you must be really patient. Wait a couple million years. What have you got to lose? So you want to be a fossil. It's pretty tough to be a fossil. Here's what you do. And I promise I won't sing anymore at all. I'm all done singing. All right. So, time to find out what it takes to be a fossil. So, an introduction to the fossil world. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, to be a fossil, step one, you have to die. I'm sorry, Mr. Squid, that's just how it works. Uh, there are not fossils that are alive, unless you are actually a living fossil. And if you're a living fossil, well, then you're like one of these creatures. The ginkgo tree, the crocodile, horseshoe crab, coelacanth, elephant sharks, the caiads, the nautilus, and the cyanobacteria. These are actually creatures or plants that have been around millions of years in the fossil records and are still around to this day. We can learn more about those later, but right now we're talking about the fossils that are dead. Fun fact. Did you know that only one tenth of one percent of all animals and plants that have died actually become fossils? That's a pretty big deal. So it's a pretty rare thing to become a fossil. So now that you're dead, Mr. Squidhead, now what do you do? Well, now you've got to get buried quickly. And a quick shout out to the Hoids. Hi, guys. Miss you. So step two in becoming a fossil, get buried quickly. Uh, unlike our poor kitten here, you would need to get buried with small sediments. So not a giant pile of boulders, but small sediments, typically those that are found around water. So sediments that have been dissolved in water, uh, muds and clays, they're perfect for getting buried quickly. Hi, Freya and Julia and the Pangirls. Also, you would need an area with low oxygen levels. Why? Because you cannot be getting dissolved and decompos and decom. Oh, I can't talk today. And you can't be decomposing uh, if you want to be a fossil. You just can't. You also need to not be around other animals who are going to eat you. So, Mr. Squid, you need to find somewhere to get very quickly, not around other animals that are going to eat you for lunch good things. All right. Step three. So now that you, Mr. Squidhead, now that you've died, you've gotten buried quickly. Step three in becoming a fossil, you need to stay buried for a very, very long time. How long exactly? Well, if you were only to stay buried for about 50,000 years, you'd be considered a sub fossil like those creatures from the Pleistocene era. So Ice Age creatures, those guys, the cave bears, the marsupial lions, the giant ground sloths, uh, the saber-toothed tigers, all of those guys are actually considered subfossils. Mammoths, mastodons, only been around for about 50,000 years or a little less. Those fossils still contain original tissues and organs. They're not considered true fossils. So sub-fossils. You want to be a real fossil, 
you need to hang around for a couple million years underground. How many couple of million years? 20, 30, 60, 300, 550 million years. Pick a number. Any of those work great. That allows permineralization per to occur. So what is permineralization? That is when the bones in a creature are replaced with minerals such as iron and calcium. So the bones decompose, are replaced typically with water. The water dries out and it leaves those minerals behind. So iron, calcium strengthens, turns those bones into stone. Permineralization can only occur after a couple million years. So Mr. Squidhead, you gotta stay underground for a long time. Typically at this point, Soft body tissue does not survive, only the hardened tissue. So our guy here, this, the cephalopod, his long tentacles did not survive. Only the bony shell of his back did. So you've got step one, two, and three. Step four, well, this is a pretty big important step. You need to avoid tectonic plates. Here's my little joke guy of the day. One tectonic plate bumped into another and said, sorry, my fault. Get it? Geologist humor. All right. So if you are a fossil, you need to avoid tectonic plates. You need to avoid things like subduction zones where the Earth's crust is going down, down, further down, and whew, almost trapped a fossil, and melting. You don't want to melt if you want to become a fossil. Also, you want to stay away from fault lines, where the two faults are sliding across each other and grinding you up. That would also be a bummer if you were a fossil. Transform boundaries. Same things, fault lines and transform boundaries sliding past each other. Bad idea. Uh, also, I didn't put in here, oh, I did put in here, uh, convergent boundaries, where the two plates are sliding into each other, and one's going up and one's going down, and you might be turned into a volcano. You might be melted right into magma and turned into, a, blown out of a volcano. That would be a bummer if you're trying to be a fossil. Now, you might get lucky if you were at a convergent zone, and you were pushed up, 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 up and made into a mountain, you could survive. You could survive as a fossil. And then it would work brilliantly into step five. Getting discovered! You must get discovered as well. So it's no sense just becoming a fossil, spending all those millions of years underground hardening and getting ready for your grand appearance. You actually have to get discovered. That means you need, it's, it's time to pop out of the ground. Someone has to find you, which means you need to pop out of the ground. Someone has to find you, but you can't be eroded away from the elements and the rain and the wind and snow and ice. You can't get damaged. You can't get broken. You can't disintegrate into dust. You can't get stolen, destroyed, smashed, you have to have the ground erode away very carefully and then someone discover you and hopefully they're a fantastic scientist who wants to spend some time protecting the area and digging you out bit by bit by bit. All of those steps need to happen in order to become a fossil. It is a long process that again only happens to one tenth of one percent of all animals and plants and creatures. That's a very small number. Without fossils, we wouldn't know certain animals even existed. So they're incredibly important, which is why there's certain rules throughout the world on what you can and can't collect, such as for all those of you going off exploring on your spring break or summer break or whenever you have a break, keep in mind that animals that have vertebrae backbones. You cannot collect those freely off public lands, especially as you go further west. 
private lands, if you get permission from the landowner, go for it. Things like invertebrates, cephalopods, snails, all those fun creatures that lived under the ocean that, yeah, don't have backbones. Those you can freely co collect on public lands. Now, say going underground is just not a thing. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go underground, squid head. No, you want to become a fossil in a different way. That's okay. There are other ways to become a fossil. You could hang out with some pine trees and get caught up in pine tree sap and then become amber over a couple hundred thousand years. Pine tree sap hardens and protects and preserves everything inside of it. That's not, that, you don't want to do that either. All right. How about hanging out at the La Brea Tar Pits? You could do that too. Just like this fantastic beetle did. I don't know if you can see him. There we go. Our La Brea Tar Pit beetle right there. Predatory diving beetle. Jumped in, thought it was water. Ends up, actually, it was tar. He got covered and coated and preserved for a couple thousand years. That's another way you could be a fossil. Again, subfossil. Not a true fossil because it wasn't buried and protected and permineralization did not happen to it. And it's, you know, wings are still there. It's so cool. But that's another way to become a fossil. You could also hang out with the glaciers and the mountains and get covered in snow and buried for hundreds of thousands of years, like the mammoths that have been discovered in Russia with still their fur and bones and organs still in them. That's another way. Become a subfossil, but another way to become fossilized. So hopefully our squid guy could come up with a great way to be a fossil. But again, it takes a long, long time, which is a bummer because most of us won't be around that long to come and discover you, Mr. Squidhead. On that note, this is sort of an introductory introductory video for fossils for all of my uh, fantastic students out there as well who are learning about rocks. Take a look at my mammoth or mastodon video also on Collie's class videos to get some more fun ideas about fossils. There will be more detailed fossil videos coming your way. But this was our short introduction on fossils. So hopefully you'll have a chance to get out Go do some exploring and find some neat stuff. Now, before you all run away, if you have questions, comments, suggestions on topics, or, hey, theme song ideas, send them my way. I'd be happy to hear them. I'm looking for some new projects and new videos to do in the future. So let me know. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Later.